Yo, what's up, what's up? This is Clee the Visionary, and you're listening to the Build Your Vision Podcast, the number one show in the world if you're trying to build your faith, your finances, and your future so you can ultimately build a life that you are proud of. And I'm here to make sure that I share everything I learn on my journey with you. And I learned a lot in today's episode. I'm interviewing Coach Karan Godwin. I mean, what do you do when you have a vision, you have a plan, but then... The plan changes. How do you pivot and still remain in the purpose God has for your life? Coach Karan, he was an all-state, all-time college basketball player, got to go to try out for the NBA, but things changed a little bit. But here's what's interesting about this interview. I actually didn't do this one recently. This is a throwback. This is a blast from the past. You're going to hear younger Clee in this episode. It's, it's kind of funny. I listened back to it, and I, I really wanted to share this one because I think it is still very relevant today. And I was like, man, the show has grown a lot. It's kind of a meta experience, you know, building your vision as you're talking about building a vision for others. And uh, it's been an amazing process. I'm proud of it. But you're going to hear younger Clee in about three Two, one. On today's episode, I have with me Karan Godwin, who's better known as Coach Godwin. And I especially like this interview because our guest today has a different type of profession and background. You don't have to be a teacher. You don't have to be a business guru, a consultant or sell products to follow and build your vision. You can be a visionary doing whatever you want, whatever you love, anything. It can even be sports, and that's exactly what Coach Godwin did. He turned his love for basketball into a love of helping young people grow and become great athletes and ultimately become great people. Coach Godwin was an all-time scoring leader at University of North Florida. He's been inducted into the institution's Hall of Fame. He's the founder and head coach of Jumpstart Sports. He's an inventor of the ball hog training gloves and some other inventions. He's the author of Everyone Hates a Ball Hog but loves a score. He's trained young people to millions of dollars in basketball scholarships. And all of this was possible because his tryout with the Orlando Magic NBA team didn't quite play into his purpose. You'll get more into that as we go throughout this episode. If you get any value from this episode, please post a screenshot on your Instagram story. If you love the show, leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. That's the only ask I have of you. All right, let's get into this show with Coach Godwin. Let's go. You're listening to the Build Your Vision Podcast, a podcast series about maneuvering the ups and downs of building a life that you're proud of, captured in real time. A community where dreamers become doers and doers become world changers. Let's go. There is a bit of the d- depression that kicks in. Yeah. Figure my whole life, uh, I was a, I was a star. You know, I was always the leading scorer on my team. Everything's paid for. Your shoes are paid for. Your meals are paid for. Mm-hmm. You're praised. You're honored. You know, uh, I became all time leading scorer. I had to try with the Magic. And when I didn't uh, make it to the NBA, you know, the option was to go overseas, but I still had credits left to finish school. Uh-huh. And, and one of my friends um, that's actually a little bit older than me, which is University of North Florida, is actually from PG County, which I yeah, um, preside now. He told me he was over in Turkey. He said it's not worth it. He was like, get your degree because mm-hmm. you know, this don't, your legs only last for so long. But what you have can take you much further. So that allowed me to have that confidence to say, you know what? If you get overseas right now, I'm going to start my coaching career. But during that process, you know, you, you, you're not the same guy anymore. You're no yeah, longer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my first rule, because I saw it coming, I told coach, I said, look, you know, I'm going to coach for you. Because he asked me. I knew not to ask him. Because if I would have asked him, you know, you're going to do the laundry. You know, mm-hmm. that's the first thing. So I told him, don't, I'm not doing laundry. And don't yell at me in front of the guys. Because those were the guys that I led the previous three years, mm-hmm. you know? So I can't go from being that to, to being the guy that they throw laundry at. So I did go through a, a bit of a, a period where it's like, okay, what I'm going to do now. And after I graduated and had my degree, I was a year removed from basketball. I had coaching, college coaching under my belt. Like, what do I do now? So I started actually working at enterprise. Uh, well, the YMCA first, YMCA um, athletic director, which was one of the toughest jobs I ever, ever had in my life. I mean, we had over 80 teams, 80 basketball teams. Jeez. But it was great because I knew at that time that that would probably be the toughest thing I, I ever had to do. But um, I worked there and I worked for Enterprise. So you, you're talking about uh, a, a mind trip, you know what I'm saying, where your mind is really focused on maybe yeah. playing ball, making money, 
and now you're cleaning cars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. you know. Okay. You said you're from New Jersey. What part of New Jersey are you from? I'm, I'm from Roselle, New Jersey. Roselle. Okay. So Roselle, historically a basketball place, one of those places where, where definitely um you get to get in the trenches and there's a lot of athletes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The ABCD camp was in New Jersey. So I got to see all Americans coming from all around. And um, yeah, we were on top. I mean, even I mentioned Al Harrington before. He was number one in the country, number one player. And that wasn't a big thing to us. Um, Shaheem Holloway was two years before him. Uh, he came over from New York. A lot of the, the New York guys would come over to New Jersey for the opportunity. So, um, you know, it was just a basketball place. Stephon Marbury, Sham mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just, you know, everything was basketball. So for me, um, what, what separated me was was my work ethic. You know, um, I actually had a coach named um, Chris Savannah's who um, took interest in me and he was my trainer. So I had a trainer in the nineties when almost no one did. It was Al had his trainer, which was Sandy with the real runners. I had my trainer, which was Chris Savannah's with um, fast break and uh, St. Pat's. So I was at St. Pat's gym mm-hmm. almost every day. St. Pat's and, is that same school Kyrie Irving went to? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kyrie Irving, Al Hanson, Shaheem Holloway. Um, what's my guy that went to Kentucky, got drafted um, by Charlotte. He's there now. Uh, uh, Mike. Mike. Okay. Mike. Good. Chris. And what did that look like? Like, were you, was everyone out there practicing all the time or would you set, did you already separate yourself as far as your worth ethic as a kid? Um, I figured out one day because I used to go and, um, anything Chris taught me, I used to go, I used to be at the court every day. So, um, one of the, one of the funny things is this, um, he would teach me different things. And this is how my, my actually training career started. I started training kids at the age of 15 Wow. Um, because when I was younger, I say about you know eleven or twelve. You know the guys, the older guys are playing. I saw the the guy that was the man at my high school, Abraham Clark High School, which I knew I'd play at one day. And I went to him and I wanted some type of advice, like give me something. And I'm saying in my mind, he was going to teach me things. He's going to train me. He's going to do all this stuff. And he kind of just brushed me to the side. So I never forgot that feeling. So when Coach Savannah would teach me something, I would come back to the playground and I perform it, and the little kids would come around me. And they would say, hey, can you teach me? Mm-hmm. So I actually started, you know, Jumpstart Hoops back then when I was 15 years old. And I, I've been doing this. It's like second nature as far as skill training. Like, I've literally been doing this most, most of my life. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy how, like, those little teeny things that happen in life, like, trigger something that could literally set up your whole future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's always lessons. And, you know, I believe you have to fail forward. So there's always lessons, even if failures or, or disappointments. It's, it's something that, that you can get out of it. Cool. So like, okay, you're, you're training. You're, I'm pretty sure you're like one of the best kids all the time on the playground. You go to high school. At that point, were your goals set on going D1, going pro? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, NBA was, was always the, the, the goal. Something inside of me, you know, was just watching my mother go to work and also come home and do Mary Kay. So the example that I had in the household is that you have to be ambitious, you have to be driven, but you can't do one thing. Mm-hmm. So, so that was the the subconscious lesson that my mother kind of gave to me. So even though I was playing ball, hey, when I came home, I had to find something to do. I had to find something to sell. I had to look into something. And remember, I'm I'm about to be 40. So, you know, um, the Internet started kind of when I was like 15 or 16. Mm-hmm. So when I'm at that age where, you know, I'm trying to look for the things to do other than basketball. Here comes the AOL with the dial up yeah. and I the computer in the other room, you know, and it took a long, it took a while, but the world just opened up to me and it was like just perfect timing, man. It's like, okay, I, I, I'm going to make money through this one day as well. So what was, what was high school and, and college like as far as being an athlete? Oh man, like it's just, it's just unbelievable. I mean, first of all, it's a full scholarship. So, you know, everyone D1, D2, whatever. I mean, D3 is what you want, you know? <laughs> yeah. <And, laughs> I that the education is, is paid for. So I, I have fortune enough to play both Division One and Division Two, But um, it's just a it's just a crazy ride. Um, it's tough. You know, you're going to earn that scholarship. It, it, it is, they say it's free, but it's not free. Getting up <clears throat> 5 o'clock in the morning, um, hitting the track. You know, having to, to meet certain demands and times. And then, you know, uh, I'll just break down the average day. So you get up 5 o'clock, you meet at the track. The track, you may have to do some 200s, some 400s, or maybe they say you have to do the mile under six minutes. You got to be ready to do that. So, number one, this is teaching you discipline because you have to get up early in the morning. Uh, after that, you probably go straight to the weight room. So you go to the weight room, you're working out, you're already tired, but you got to push through it. 
after that, you probably go to class, which is, as you know, it's probably two hours because, you know, college, college courses, um, you go twice a week. It's not like high school. Mm-hmm. So you're already tired trying to make it through that. I mean, sometimes, to be honest you, I mean, you're falling asleep depending on the, the day you had. Right. Um, then you, you can't wait to get back to your room and go to sleep. But now you have to come back to the gym because you have individuals. All right. And individuals is when the, the college coaches back in that time, I guess it was a group of three or four where they were allowed to spend an hour with you. So in that hour, they're doing little stuff that they want you to do during the season, a little skill work and, and just, you know, coaching you not as a team, but in, in individual units. After that, you have to play with the team. Right. So that's a crazy day. That's and, crazy. Um, yeah. So, so most freshmen, uh, to be honest with you, they, they aren't ready for it. Um, high school just I mean you don't have to do that you know and most guys especially if you got there through your talent you may really not know what it takes to excel at that level so that's why the transfer rate is so high mm-hmm. you know because mm-hmm. kids come in they're not ready um, sometimes you get into the doghouse you know I remember my roommate you know spent the night at his girlfriend's house which means he was old he's a year older than me which means he wasn't there to wake me up you know and my alarm didn't come on he called me he's like where, where are you I was like, uh oh, it was it was past Dang. time. And they said, don't even come. And said, don't worry about it. On your off day, you're going to come in here. You're going to do double. So um, it teaches you discipline, but it's, it's extremely tough, man. And um, and also the, the mental demands too. Uh, college, they, they want to make sure that you mentally can deal with the rigors and, and what's going to go on during the season. So um, there may be times where you don't get playing time. You may start one game. Next game, you may not play at all. You know, you got to get through that, you know. Um, they they have uh, you got to figure you got a college coach is making anywhere from three hundred thousand to you know two million dollars a year and his Sheesh. job depends on an eighteen year old jump shot right you know what I'm saying yeah so that's crazy. you know you don't see it that way at the time but the pressure is enormous on him this is how he feeds his family so you know he's gonna be tough on you so it's it's extremely tough but once you get the groove of it and you, you get a good program that, that matches who you are and that's why I tell kids like the highest school isn't always the best school. You know, you have to go to the school that's right for you. It may be a mid major, you know, because they're going to give you the attention you need. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody needs a different amount of attention when it comes to college. But off the court is great. Everything's free, obviously, you know, um, and you get praise. Everyone knows or uh, knows you around campus. But um, I'm trying to teach kids something else um, that, you know, you got to realize the position that you're in is so influential because everyone's coming to you. So don't be a jerk. You know what I'm saying? Talk to people. Um, network like you have to network I mean that's the purpose of college like you know the debate now is going on do you really need college right and, and my whole thing is why not right so college is, is is a group of individuals that are aggregated based off test scores and willingness to go through a process and while you're in your 20s especially your early 20s and you're not you know developed as far as you know being a man yet and you have time to make mistakes and meet people like that's the perfect ground for you to connect with like-minded people that are going to be able to help you out in the future so yeah it's, yeah, it's not always about the book like i don't want i don't want my son to go to yale because it's a different book it's the same book that, that's such a <laughs> college. yeah i'm gonna go to harvard because his 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 teammate his father is right you know, owns five banks in a in a in the oil business, like that, that's the reason why I want him to go to Harvard. You're networking with, with people that are just on, uh, you know, like minded or on a, another level that can help you out. Yeah, I mean, the whole the whole college and you hear on the show, you'll hear me take different stances. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, college is you don't need you, you don't need college, but you also have to know yourself and what you need. And I'm I'm typically pro college because I went to college. And do I think I needed everything I learned in my degree? Absolutely not. But do I think I was afforded experiences that propel me into the direction I'm going into now? Absolutely. So, you know, you kind of have to know do you, if you already have a plan, and you know exactly which direction you're going. Hey, if you don't need a college degree to do that, by all means, go for it. But if you have my my motto is when in doubt, go to college because you'll discover things about yourself that you never would have known otherwise. And. I kind of want to ask you, I mean, I've never been, you know, the best athlete. I played varsity in high school, but my high school wasn't even ranked. So, you know, I don't know what that means. But uh, like being a you were you were inducted into the Hall of Fame at University of North Florida. You were all time leading scorer. I know like everyone probably knew who you were on campus. What was Mm -hmm. that like navigating like friendships, relationships, people who are for you or people who are with you just because they think you go into the league or things like that? Like, I kind of want to know how that dynamic was. 
Well, well, college um, is different than high school. High school, you have friends that aren't athletes because these are the people that um, you choose because, you know, you like them. You have right. a connection. With them. Yeah. And in college, uh, when, once you join uh, in college basketball, you're actually in a fraternity. That, that, that's what you're in. So most of the people you interact with every day are going to be your fraternal brothers, which are the people that are on um, that college basketball team. So you're kind of insulated a little bit, you know, if you want to be, you know, by the end of the year or by as, as time goes on and you're on campus, you get to meet different people, see different people, people that may be in other fraternities or people that, you know, if you have a, a skill of networking, you, you get the chance to actually meet other people. But that's when you kind of feel that, you know, what I'm saying like that adulation is real. Like I remember even in Buffalo when I was leaving, I went to a party and like these people were going crazy, like you're number thirty two, you're yeah. this, you're that, and I'm like, oh wow, like I didn't know it was like that because, like I <laughs> said, you can kind of stay in your bubble, yeah. you know. But um, but yeah, once you come out the bubble, it's like yeah, like you you realize that people really really take to you, and um, it's up to you to take advantage of of the opportunities that may present themselves as far as building um relationship equity. Cool. Are there any like were there any like crazy stories or anything that was just like that was weird that has ever happened because of, of that pedestal sometimes people put you on you know I, i'll take it back to this time so uh my cousin broke my scoring record at my school so university of North florida i didn't know he's my cousin oh, you really? know yeah <laughs> his, his name is uh dallas moore and, I, and i'm sitting there watching him and I watched him his freshman year, and he gave Florida, you know, which is obviously high major. We're yeah. a mid-major, but high major. He gave him, like, 26. So I said, oh, shoot. shoot. And I'm always on the watch list because it's my record, yeah. you know? And there's two people that I was watching, a guy named Bo Beach, whose father gave me my first head coaching job in East High School where Tim Tebow went in Florida. So his father was a head coach. He went to another school. He gave me the head coaching job. So I knew Bo, and we talked to Bo, and I kind of – was you know influential and, and him wanting to go to North Florida. We just knew each other and, and he went to North Florida. So he actually broke my record as well. But Dallas was he's number one right now. And and I, I remember saying, man, this, this kid is good. So my grandmother called me one day when I was congratulating him and said, Where's he from? I said, I don't know. He's from Florida. She's like, Well I think that's your cousin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he ended up being my cousin. So um, fast forward to now, we have social media. So I'm talking to Dallas at NBA Summer League yeah. uh, last year. And he was telling me how they had to switch his classes because he couldn't really make it to class because of the celebrity on campus. Now, we're talking about North Florida, which is a mid-major. Right. And it's that, you know what I'm saying, people are just starting to learn about. And he can't make it to class. Sheesh. So so just think about that. You had to switch some classes to online because it was that crazy. That's I mean, crazy. Like, like he, he and, and Bo Beach were on the same team, so they, they won the championship there, and the place was sold out. I mean, season ticket holders. I mean, it, it got to crazy. So just imagine that times 45 when you talk about being on a high major campus and you being a guy. Man, it, it can get really, really crazy. I can yeah. only imagine. So you you – you're doing great in college. Your college career is taking off, and you get you get to go to a, a trial for the Orlando Magic, right? Yeah. And um, what happened in that trial? And, and I kind of want to start transitioning to the part where you realize that pro is not the future, and you and you had to make a decision about where you're going to go next. So it, it was a bittersweet announcement because Coach called me to the office. I walk into the office. Hey, Coach, what's going on? And he tells me that the Orlando Magic want me to come try out i'm like what wow. so, I'm, so i'm sitting there like you know because at the time i went from division one down to division two mm -hmm. and then, then they were going division back to division one after i was i'm like wow like like what what are, what are the chances you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you know um and it happened i mean and, and i think god was just showing me that that anything is possible you know like like i, I have your back you know yeah. i can take you anywhere i want you to go you know yeah so it was just a, a reassurance that, that i was on the right path and but he also told me that, you know, due to my medical history, um, I twisted both ankles over 60 times. Like, I might, yeah, I had a, a, a terrible ankle injury, um, I think, going into college. I mean, I mean, I literally in my in my visit, I couldn't play or anything. I mean, I was limping around. They gave me the scholarship. You know, I did well there. Um, you know, freshman year, my high was 26 points, but my ankles were done and I didn't really get therapy till I came down to UNF, but they, they record every time you twist your ankle. Wow. No, that, that was every day for me. I mean, <laughs> I had rubber ankles, you know, 
And even my senior year, it was hard to play. Like, I had to take Advil just so I can play. I mean, that's how bad it got. So he told me, like, look, you know, we have to give him your medical thing, but just go there and try your best. So I already kind of knew, you know what I'm saying? Once they saw that, they'll be like, all right, you know. But um, it was this validation for me, man, all the hard work, man, that I put in over the years. And I put a lot of this into my book, Everyone Hates a Ball Hog, but they all love a score, which is – um. It's a free audio book on my website, ballhoggloves.com. If anyone wants, wants to check it out, you can kind of listen to my story or you can buy the book. doesn't matter. Um, I said that that was validation of all the hard work, all the hours in the gym just to reach the top of the, the mountaintop. So, so, yeah, man, it was a bit of sweet. But at that point in time, you know, I've been preparing for that the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Basketball, to me, was never the, the end all to be all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I always wanted to be more than an athlete. That mentality that LeBron James has, I always had that. I never wanted someone to look at me just as an athlete. I wanted people to know that, you know, I was articulate, I was intelligent, and that this basketball is, is a conduit or means to an end. It's means to, for me to get to the next level where I want to be. And now you're done with college, you got your business degree, and you kind of have to just navigate in a space that's no longer with athletics as being the full-time thing what was that like as far as navigating that space man especially after you know i coached for years so that was a bit of a buffer but after that like after i really graduated with that degree it was tough it was extremely tough because now you know you you realize that those free outback meals <laughs> aren't free you know you yeah. realize that a state costs 15 dollars right yeah. so so um, it, it was tough at the time, you know, driving a car in Florida with no AC. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just it's just the little things just started to to, to jump out at you, man, because people aren't catering to you anymore. It's literally you're starting from ground zero, and it's what are you going to do? And sad to say, a, a lot of athletes um don't take the experience they have. I've been playing basketball since eight, and at that point in time, I'm I'm 23, so I mean that's that's a lot of knowledge, mm-hmm. you know. 17 years so that's a lot of knowledge so you know unfortunately for me i was able to to kind of work a job you know i did that the ymca athletic director then i did the enterprise and with enterprise i was able to start coaching and, and getting back to my passion and ultimately training so i was able to start you know earning income from from both sides of the fence yeah and you started to touch on it earlier what was that like mentally transitioning and and putting yourself in a space where you have to work towards something that you had never worked toward before like i mean it's not basketball anymore oh man i, I mean i call my mother shoot tons of time man i, I remember calling her <laughs> it's crazy in the middle of cleaning out a car you know enterprise cars you know they'll do do whatever in there so i'm cleaning out the car and it's florida i'm still in florida now like it's 100 degrees outside in the summertime but you got to get out there and clean that car with a, a white shirt and tie. Yeah. Yep. So, so I'm out there and I'm like, man, like, how did I get here? You know, like, you know, uh, and, you know, I had a little bit of depression, a little bit. in uh, when I was at Buffalo, mm. um, probably because you can't see the sun for like yeah. seven months out of the year, <laughs> never not seen the sun. You know what I'm saying? Jersey, it snows, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But you see the sun. So I, I had a little bit of that and I kind of felt a little bit of that starting to creep back in. So I had to call my mother. You know, we prayed about it. Um, I'm a Christian man. She's a Christian woman based on those uh, on those principles. And basically, you know, my mother was saying that 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 there, there's another path for you, you know, and you have to trust the process. So it's funny. I was eating with, with one of my friends. We, we were at a restaurant and someone from from the church that I didn't even know was from my church, but she was just there. She's like, can I interrupt? And we were like, OK, me and my boy are just talking. So she was talking about telling him stuff about him that I knew that she didn't know any of us. So I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is a crazy, you know, feeling right now because yeah. she's telling you about you and your business. So yeah. she tells us and that. And then, and, and then she asked me a question I, and I said something about playing basketball and she said, don't worry about that. Just start your own business. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, okay. Okay. You know? so, sure. so, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, you know, so that was one of those, those pivotal moments where it's like, look, you have all this experience and knowledge, man. Why, why not give it back and um, be able to push people forward and get get them to the level or beyond where you were? So I I, I get to do that every day. I mean, now um, I've helped kids in the millions of dollars of scholarships. You know, that, that's part of my ulterior motive and jumpstart hoops and training is you know getting these young kids, especially ones that look like me, 
and others that don't the opportunity to get a free education and get a, a leg up and also give them the mentorship that I may not have had or known at the time, you know, whether they want to navigate into the professional ranks or they want to, you know, they want to be a professional or something else. I'm able to give them different advice. So yeah. it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. And we're kind of segueing into the part of what this podcast is all about, building your vision. Okay. Now you kind of have like a, a vision. The the lady enlightened you. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and you're like, okay, you know, I have something to offer the world. I have something to give. How do I put this all into a package where I could deliver it to people and start this business, start this passion project, start whatever it is? It's really hard to start executing. Usually the hardest part is getting started. So what did you do yeah. uh, to, to start what the process of what you have built now? So um, one of the things you, you learn, um, I learned early in my freshman year, you said what lessons did I have? I remember we were in practice, we were in Buffalo. And there's a drill called the shell drill. And in this drill, there's an odd number of players. So we'll have three guys on defense and four guys on offense. And the four guys are spread around. And it's an unfair advantage that forces you to talk, communicate, and rotate. Mm. So, of course, most freshmen never did this before. You, you you suck at the drill. And in your mind, it's stupid because it's four of them, three of us. Like, how are we going to stop them? Yeah. But I remember being frustrated one time and Coach saw that the other team was scoring because of me. I wasn't communicating and talking. And he just said, he just yelled out, you know what I'm saying? Do something. Figure it out. So the lesson is that is that you have to be active. You can't sit at home thinking about your vision. Oh, blah, blah, blah. that's not how it happens. You have to be active. You have yeah, to do something. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And e even if it meant when that guy had the ball, he's going to the hole, I, I got more physical with him. You know what I'm saying? Because so I had to give my teammates time to rotate behind me. Like mm -hmm. It was little stuff like that that I learned. But what I learned is you have to be active. So with me, I already had the skill set. I was already training my whole life keep on doing that. Now, on top of that, you know what I'm saying? I need a vision. I need a purpose. I need a mission statement. Mm -hmm. So my first mission statement was, okay, I want everyone in, in the world to know who I am. All right, real simple. Real simple. I, I, don't, I don't know what this is turning into. I just know that in this basketball world, I want everyone to know who I am. So at that time, you know, I'm training and a guy comes to me. He's like, dude, you're a great trainer. You should put this on video. You know, now we're talking like pre YouTube. -ish. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm saying YouTube starting in 05. Yeah. Right? So this is like 06. And I'm like, OK, whatever. So I start um, making videos and put them on YouTube. I didn't know that was the, one of the first basketball trainers on YouTube. I didn't know that. YouTube right. starts in 05. When I was putting my videos on YouTube, there was nothing on YouTube but like like copyrighted like yeah. television. Like Martin. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we just talking with Martin. And then you right. Look, exactly or something like that you know what I'm saying so what that did was that allowed me to create a, a platform because you know years later one of the big trainers now said I grew up watching your stuff that's wow that's crazy because yeah. in 06 he's 10 years younger than me mm -hmm. um, I was 26 he was 16 right. you know what I'm saying so what is he looking at on YouTube it's only a few videos and one of them is mine yeah so that allowed me to build a platform and I didn't know at the time that's what that was. I just said, I want everyone to know who I am. So I did that. I'm putting my videos on YouTube and I'm just doing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm thousands of people are getting to know who I am without me even knowing because I'm mm -hmm. just, no, I mean, social media, that's, that's the beginning of it. And then social media really hit with Twitter. That's when it got crazy because now I can develop a following that I can actually see mm -hmm. people that already knew me from the videos. So I had a leg up. And now I can start pumping it out, you know. And the other thing I figured, just, you know, my, my technical background of, of being in, in IT, because I'm in IT as extension of business, is that every everything has a white space. So any software that comes out, like anything new, is going to have some mm -hmm. hack to it that mm -hmm. you can do, you know, say at the time. And for Twitter, it was crazy because Twitter was set up to where whenever you follow someone, they would get an email back then. Oh, right. really? See, that was before I was even on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is early Twitter. Yeah. So if you were very aggressive and following and then you had hashtags, you know what I'm saying? You still had the searches. Yeah. So I can search ball is life. I can search a basketball term and just follow that person. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I had more followers than them, most people just follow because they go, like, oh, who's this guy? He's a coach. And they didn't know. 
So I was able to build my 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 Twitter following. I mean, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. It just, it just kept going, you know. So I was able to push out even more content through Twitter. And then Instagram came. and did, So, so yeah, so it, it kind of came true. The mission statement came true. I wanted to, and many people know me as possible. And I just wanted to give, you know, even before Gary V, you know, put it in the book, you know, yeah. Jack, Jack Right Hook. Yeah. <laughs> I was just giving, you know, because I wanted, and I knew that, that part of my talent was um, being able to, to teach the game, but also provide drills. That's the one thing that every basketball player and coach wants is drills. And I'm like, I have a million drills in my head. I mean, it's just I've been doing this since 15. Mm-hmm. I, I wake up in the middle. Uh, you can you can wake me up in the dead of the, the night, and I could do a workout for you. I mean, just I just had that gift. Right. So being able to put that gift on display just you know created a platform and a, and a following. Right, and you just started doing something. You took action, and then it kind of just took off from there. And it kind of gave you, okay, well, I need to go here next. And you go. That's what that's what I try to really let people know. It's like you're not gonna have the plan like all figured out like you got to just start doing something then you realize oh okay i need to go here oh, okay i need to go here and then it turns into oh it looks like you had a plan the whole time <laughs> but yeah. it's like nah i was just going from one step to the next yeah and um yeah and, and and i have all different type of basketball analogies but it's just like it's like being being a post player right mm-hmm. being a post player you're not a controller when you get the ball it's it's yes. really all the guards right yeah so a lot of post players will be on the block, right? And the guys behind them, mm-hmm. they don't know where he is. Mm-hmm. All they know is they want that ball. You see this all the time. The guard throws the ball, what happens? The guy comes, comes around, around, steals the ball. You know, it happens all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's because he, he doesn't understand that sometimes there's a process to what you want, you know? So for me, the process was get the audience, which mm-hmm. is called branding. You know, mm-hmm. build your brand and your platform and then you can figure out what it is you have. So just like the post player, you got to give that guy an elbow. You got to know where he is. Put your body on him. Sit mm-hmm. down low. Squat so that you can know where he is. Mm-hmm. So you know where you want to receive the ball. Because if he's if he's pressuring you to the baseline, I need the ball to this hand. If he's right. pressuring, you, you know what I'm saying. But so so that taught me you have to reverse engineer success, which I always do. And the first step is getting the audience. You can have the best invention, the best thing in the world, but if no one knows no about one it, knows it. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You now, know? this that draws this question in my head, though. Some people want the audience and they're like, OK, I need to get followers. I need to get this. I need to get an email list, whatever it is. But then they don't have anything to offer on the other end. That's what I'm saying. It's a process to in order to get the audience. Now, you know what I want. I need an audience. I need a platform. People know that now. Right. They didn't know that before. They know that now. People just want to sell. Right. They just want to sell your, your widget. Like, but when, how do you communicate with those people again? You know what I'm saying? There, there, was a, there was a gap. But now people understand with the audience. So now with the audience, yeah, you have to provide value. Like, people message me all the time. Can I have this? Can I have that? Like, what, you're not giving me anything. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. I'm saying? You're, ask, you're, you're asking to take from me, you know, but you're not giving. So, case in point, um, how this uh, podcast came about when Ryan... Uh, Gordon Free Alexander was telling you about how he got in contact with me. Yeah, he offered his services for free. Yep. I mean, what basketball trainer doesn't need content? Right. Exactly. I mean, that's easy. So I'm like, all right, come on up. And then he was able to get in my good graces and gave him the opportunity to actually to to build with me and me to understand the young man that he is. And um, you know, he wanted some mentorship. I'm like, cool. I, I like the guy. You know, and next thing you know, we final four. Like it, things happen that way. But yeah, value was always first. You got to provide value. Right. Exactly. I don't. I didn't want anyone to misconstrue that and say, oh, I just need to. I need to get an audience. Well, okay, but what? Why, why would they want to stay in contact with you? You know what I'm saying? But kind of coming to the to a close. Everyone has ups and downs, you know, um, in their career, in their journey, in their vision building process. What were some shortcomings or some failures that you experienced um, in your journey? Oh, man. I mean, there's, there's failures every day, especially when you talk about, you know, being in business, um, having balance. I think balance is the, is the toughest thing because now, you know, I'm be 40 next year. So you got two kids, you got a wife. Yeah. You know, how do you balance that? And compete with your 26 year old self that had all the time in the world to be up, you know, writing books and and creating things and creating products. So um, balance is always something that's needed. 
and just just being able to um you know if i were to go back i think i did a pretty good job but just being intentional about networking because you can't do it yourself you know i, I think that's you know without going into every single failure i've ever had um, most things can be fixed if you could pick up the phone and call somebody who's a subject matter expert in that mm. thing. Mm-hmm. It's, and so for me, I had to bump my head a lot, you know, in a lot of different areas, especially because, you know, just being a trailblazer, being one of the first, you know, on social media, whatever. I mean, no one knew, you know, mm-hmm. no one knew this was going to, you know, like Instagram is now reality and the real world is now the fake world now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When it comes to business, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, Kylie Jenner is worth more than, you know, Beyonce. Right. Yeah. How, how is that? You know, Rihanna's worth more than Beyonce right now. Like how, you know, it's the you know, embracing social media. So, so th- things have changed. And I, I just believe that, you know, my philosophy is to fail forward, man. I love it. Like, I love it because whenever you fail, that means it's going to be harder for the next person to duplicate what you're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once you navigate it and you get around it, it's like, okay. And now I understand the game. Yeah. You know? That's definitely a quote I use all the time. Like, Yo, know, the easiest thing to do is ask questions. It will save you a lot of time. <laughs> it will save you a lot of time. Um, instead of, you know, I mean, you can always figure it out on your own, but if you have the resources around you to kind of navigate and avoid some of those pitfalls, by all means, go that route. Yeah, and it, it, for me, like, you know, success, like, you want to reverse engineer. A lot of people say success is making money. I mean, I guess that's a part of it. But if you really want to reverse engineer success, it's it comes from networking. It comes from being around the right people and meeting as many people as possible. And coming from a place where I come from, Tri State area, New Jersey, we're we're anti network. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't say hi to each other. We don't yeah. say hi to <laughs> if somebody says something to you is a problem right away because we don't talk to each other. Right. You know, just getting out of that mindset and, and traveling the country, you, you gain perspective. And once you gain that perspective, man, you know, networking, especially basketball, I mean, it's one of the biggest networks in the world. I mean, I, I can't explain to you how many opportunities I got through basketball. Like literally to this day, like kids I train, you know, their parents do something, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're PG County, the wealthiest um, African-American place in the world. Yep. So there's just tons of people here that are doing things that, that are amazing. And, um, you know, um, yeah, it all comes down to networking. So. So what's one of the biggest successes that you had so far in your career? Oh, uh, I think that that whenever I help somebody get a scholarship, it's just, man, like. I don't know what's, what's bigger than that. You know, obviously, I, you know, make a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? That's that's great to have as a goal, mm-hmm. you know. But when you leave this earth, uh, what was your legacy? What was your legacy? And to yeah. say that you helped thousands of players get scholarships into the millions of dollars and you helped change their family tree, you helped you help change their, their perspective on life. You know I mean, I have college kids come home right now and we go we go to lunch together. We don't talk about basketball, right? Like at all. Yeah, you know, it's more like than I, basketball I, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I have a kid that's at Stanford. You know, like he's in the elite of the world. Yep. You know, once you get to Ivy League, Stanford, Duke, like you're the elite of the world. You're you're in a special group that you really have to take advantage of. Our conversations are, are deep. You know, internships. You know, how do we get here? How do we get to this person? So, um. So, yeah, I would say that that would definitely be my, my big, biggest success that I've had an impact on, on other people. And also people that I don't know through my app, through my training. I mean, there's people in Africa that reach out to me all across the world, messing me every day. How do I do this? How to do that? So, um, you know, you just want to submit your legacy of one of giving and letting, letting God's light shine. Yeah, man, that's good. <laughs> And la- last thing, uh, just if you had a phrase, like imagine there was a scrapbook and in this scrapbook, there was everyone that ever lived and each person had like a quote or a phrase. You know how they have like a high school thing you could put on your yearbook thing. What would be the phrase that you would want the world to see for under your name? Yeah, well, I put that every day on, on Instagram and, and all social media and it's God first, uh, work it till. So God first is self-explanatory, acknowledgement of the creator. I mean, we're here for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a Christian man. Everyone has their own beliefs. But, you know, you know, I believe and you know, thank you, you know, Jesus Christ for dying for my sins. And it's just acknowledgement and the gratitude of being here and having an opportunity to do what I do every day. And then the philosophy of life is work until. So you work until you master your craft. There's no set amount of hours to success. Um, you work until you master your crossover. You work until you become a millionaire. Uh, you work until you get that promotion. 
And when you have that mentality, I believe you're unstoppable. Um, I'm an investor as well. And one of the things about investing is that you don't lose until you sell. Yeah. You know, you, you could buy a stock at, at 10. It could be down at five. Right. The stock is down, but you do not lose until you sell. Got you. Yep. So stay in there and you persevere through whatever it is in your life. If you could just stay in the ring, keep mm-hmm. fighting, sooner or later that stock's going back up. And and you buy low, you sell high. So God first, work until. Man, yeah, that's good. And I see you got the all the, it's branded all over you, man. Work until that's not where'd you get that uh where'd you get that poster with the stick figure, man? That's tough. Yeah, that's the, that's one one of my logos, you know. So that's nice, man. Yeah, but, you um, got the stick man. You killed it, bro. That was it, man. Uh I think this episode Thank you, Coach Godwin, for coming on the show. I hope you all learned something from this episode. I know I learned a lot. This episode was so much bigger than basketball. Everything Coach Godwin said applies to your vision story as well. All right. Awesome interview, Younger Clee. That wasn't bad at all, man. You were doing a good job back in the day. Oh, okay. That was a great episode. I mean, a lot to learn. I mean, like we talked a lot about basketball, but it's really about life. God first, work until. I mean, that's what we're going to keep doing with this show. We haven't even touched the surface of what I think the Build Your Vision brand can do in the world. And I know you have probably barely scratched the surface of what you are building. Listen to what Coach Godwin said. Heed the work ethic that he had and be able to pivot. Even when things don't go exactly how you thought they were going to go. Look, we make a vision, but ultimately, God might laugh at our plans, but we just have to be willing to listen and obey and pivot according to the purpose he has for us. Hey, look, if you like this episode, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and share it on your Instagram story. Spread the word. Don't give up. God first. Work until. Keep building your vision every single day i'll talk to y'all next week peace executive production by clevon davis music production by clevon davis and christian hernandez build your vision podcast is a product of build your vision llc Hey guys, Clee here. Thanks so much for listening to the Build Your Vision podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I would think you did if you stayed all the way to the end. The best thing that you could do to help support this show is by sharing it with somebody. By you just taking a few seconds to recommend this show to somebody, you are making a huge impact, not only on the success of this show, but possibly on that person's life.